Welcome to Regina Decor Carmeli.Faith, Educating for Eternity. In this coming episode, we will look at the second dogma of Mary, which is in relation to her conception. That is, at the moment of her existence in her mother's womb, Mary was free from all stain of sin, including original sin. This is such a debated belief about Mary, and we will show that she is not only worthy of this title, but she is the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception simply means that at the instant Mary began to exist, she was preserved from original sin, that is, from the stain, sin that all mortals, all of us, are conceived and for most born with. Hence the need for baptism. Mary was conceived by her parents in a normal way. However, because of the future merits of her son, Jesus, who is God incarnate, Mary's soul was adorned with sanctifying grace from the very instant of her existence. She was neither predestined nor an after event. It was instantaneous from conception. The article of faith or dogma was officially declared in 1854, but was always believed, as well as announced by the angel Gabriel in Luke's Gospel, as well as in Genesis 3 verse 15. And we have covered these in great depth in earlier episodes. I'll place the link in the description box for you to follow through. Pius X defined the Immaculate Conception in 1854, and I'd like to quote from this document. Quote, to the honour of the holy and undivided Trinity, to the glory and adornment of the Virgin Mother of God, to the exaltation of the Catholic faith and the increase of the Christian religion, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and by our own, we declare, we pronounce and define that, that the doctrine which holds that the most blessed Virgin Mary at the first instance of her conception by a singular grace and privilege of Almighty God in virtue of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the human race, was preserved immaculate from all stain of original sin, which has been revealed by God and on this account must be firmly and constantly believed by all the faithful. Close quote. So when did God reveal this mystery? Let us revisit this mystery and for those who are watching for the first time. God did this when he inspired the writer of Genesis to say, I will put enmities between thee, the serpent, and the woman, and thy seed and her seed, she shall crush thy head, and you will wait at her heel. So who is this serpent? Who are the seeds of the serpent? Well, serpent is Lucifer and all those who follow him. And yes, there are people who follow him. Who is, the, who is the woman? Well, the woman is Mary. And who are her seeds? Well, the seeds of Mary are Jesus and all those who follow Jesus. So Mary is one with Christ in war and in victory. Choosing a mere moral ordinary woman would not suffice because the victory in order to be attained must be incompatible with that of Satan. Satan was prideful. Satan and also our parents inherited original sin because they offended God. Mary would have to be, have to be completely the opposite, hence the enmity between her and Satan. Since Mary is free from all sin, she is also free from original sin. This is why we accept the Immaculate Conception on the authority of God who reveals this truth to us, it is a matter of divine. According to Pius IX, God also revealed this mystery when he bade the angels salute Mary with the words, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. The angel didn't say to Mary, hello, or hi, or g'day, or, but he said hail. Our speech is high and holy as we hail her, meek and lowly. In thus revealing Mary's unique fullness of grace, God at the same time 
reveals her preservation from original sin. In other words, he reveals the Immaculate Conception. Like her son, Mary was wholly sinless. He, however, was sinless by nature. She, through grace. He, by excellence. She, by privilege. He, as Redeemer. And she, as the first to be sanctified by his precious blood. Prior to this declaration by Pius IX in 1854, the Church has had and held this tradition of Mary being immaculately conceived from all times. The early fathers of the Church unanimously spoke and speak of Mary's holiness and immaculate conception. Let us begin with the Apostle St. Andrew's testimony as recorded in, in the celebrated letter of the priest of Patras. Quote, First man was created of immaculate earth. It was necessary that the perfect man should be born of an immaculate virgin, through whose means the Son of God, who had before created man, might repair that eternal life which had been lost through Adam. Celebrated comparison between Adam and Eve, where Adam and Eve came from a pure world, a pure earth, an immaculate earth, untamed. And therefore, wouldn't it be fitting that the perfect man would also come from a perfect woman? And you'll see a lot of this analogy of this natural uh, purity and purification of the earth from the early fathers. This is also the, the view of St. Justin, St. Irenaeus, Tertullian, St. Cyril of Jerusalem, and St. Epiphanius. St. Justin says, He was made from a virgin at the way by which disobedience took its beginning from the serpent, by the same it might receive its destruction. For whilst Eve was yet a virgin and incorrupt, having conceived the word spoken to her by the serpent, she brought forth disobedience and death. But the Virgin Mary, when she had received faith and joy, as Gabriel announced to her, the glad message, that the Spirit of the Lord should descend in her, and the power of the Most High should overshadow her, gave answer, Be it done to me according to thy word. St. Hippolytus, who is a bishop and martyr, says, speaking the first of our Saviour, He was the ark formed of incorruptible wood. For by this is signified that his tabernacle was exempt from putridity and corruption, which brought forth no corruption or sin. But the Lord was exempt from sin of wood not obnoxious to corruption, according to man that is, of the Virgin and of the Holy Ghost, covered within and without with the pure gold of the Word of God. Oregon, or the ancient author of the homilies which is attributed to him, speaks of the Mother of God. He says, This Virgin Mother of the Only Begotten of God is called Mary, worthy of God, immaculate of the immaculate, one of the one. In the first in the 4th century, St. Ephraim extolled the Blessed Virgin in streams of the sweetest and most melodious eloquence. In a prayer to the Blessed Mother of God, he says, Immaculate and uncontaminated, incorrupt and thoroughly chaste, and a virgin most estranged from every soil and stain of sin, the spouse of God and Our Lady. St. Augustine, in his book Nature and Grace, also says, Except... He says, the Holy Virgin Mary, of whom, for the honour of the Lord, I will have no question whatever when sin is concerned. For whence can we know the measure of grace conferred on, on, uh, conferred on her to vanquish sin on we do not transfer Mary to the devil by the condition of her birth, for this reason that the condition is dissolved by the grace of her new birth. By the 17th century, the Eastern Church celebrated the Feast of Mary's Conception, and by the 8th century, it was generally held among the faithful of the East that her conception was immaculate. So the feast was subsequently, subsequently introduced in Italy and Spain, and then throughout the rest of Europe.
In 1568, when Pope Pius V's missal appeared, he extended the Feast of the Immaculate Conception to the Universal Church. So in summary, sin of our first parents is that we inherit this sin, and we call this sin the original sin. In order to repair the damage that was committed by Adam and Eve through the serpent, an immaculate virgin would be born. The earth brought forth two virginal humans, and God brought forth his mother, a virgin immaculate, who brought Jesus, God incarnate. God certainly loves us and has not left us orphaned. In our next episode, we will look at the third dogma attributed to Mary, and that is her perpetual virginity. Viewers, if this episode has actually benefited you in some way, we welcome you to like our video, and also we'll leave all our links to the previous episode in the description. Next time, God be with you.